Hi, today we are doing lesson 3.7 and review of everything we've learned in MIU2 Investigations Unit 1. So let's take a look. We have been learning about using an array to model multiplication, using arrays to identify and learn multiplication facts, and using known multiplication facts to determine products of more difficult facts. Here's some of the key vocabulary we talked about in this unit. So first we talked about an array. Array means the arrangement of objects in equal rows and columns. The key word here is equal. The rows have to have the same exact number in each of them. So if you look at the picture of apples, we have three rows of apples and there's five apples in each row. That is representing the multiplication problem three times five, three groups of five. We could skip count by fives then to figure out how many total. Five, 10, 15. Three groups of five equals 15. You see there's also an array with squares in it. So we have three rows of squares with five squares in each row, just like the apples. Both the apples and the squares are an arrangement of objects. The arrangement of the apples or the arrangement of the squares into equal rows and columns. That is an array. If you put a shape around the outside of the array, you would see that there is a rectangular shape. Another word we've learned in this unit is row. And when we talk about rows in an array, rows go from left to right. It's a horizontal arrangement of numbers or information in an array or table. So if you look at the picture, the yellow row is going from left to right. That's a row. There are two green rows, one on top and one on bottom. We also learned the word column. Columns go up and down. That is a vertical arrangement of numbers or information in an array or table. So if you look at the picture, the yellow column goes up and down. And there's also three columns of green. Another word we've talked about in this unit is dimension. Dimensions are width and depth and height. When we have an array, we have two dimensions. We have how wide it is and how high it is. So you can see that this rectangle is five centimeters wide and four centimeters high. Those are its dimensions, five times four. And finally, we learned about the word area. The area is the measure in square units of the inside of a plane figure. A plane figure means a flat figure that you would find drawn on paper. So the blue rectangle that you see in the picture, that's a plane figure. And the area is how many squares, square units, we see in the rectangle. So I have two rows of five, which equals 10. This can be modeled with a multiplication problem. Two times five equals 10 total square units. Now we want to warm up by counting around the classroom in this lesson, and we count around the classroom by twos, fives, and tens. So if you're listening to this video, you might pause the video and practice skip counting on your own by twos, fives, and tens. Twos might sound like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and so on. Fives might sound like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and so on. And tens might sound like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and so on. You practice on your own. Today we're reviewing what we've learned about arrays. And here's a sample problem that you might see on a test or quiz. We have four arrays, A, B, C, and D in this problem. And the question we need to answer is, which two arrays show the same product? If I'm looking at array A, I see that there are two rows and there's six squares in each row. So that is modeling two times six. If I'm looking at array B, I can see that there are three rows and there's one, two, three in each of the rows. So three times three equals nine. 
There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares. So B has a total area of nine, while A was two times six equals 12. So A and B are not showing the same product because A is showing us 12 square units, while B is showing us nine square units. So let's see if C or D has an area of 12 or nine that would match A or B. Let's go to C. We have one, two, three rows, and one, two, three, four squares in each row. So in C, our multiplication problem would be three rows of four. Three times four equals 12. Hey, wait a minute. A was two rows of six, two times six equals 12, and C was three times four equals 12. So the answers to this problem would be that A and C have the same product. They are both showing an answer of 12 square units. Review problem number two is showing us which multiplication fact do these arrays show. Let's look at A. Using my pointer, I'm gonna count the number of rows. One, two, three, four. That's four rows. And I'm gonna go across to see how many squares there are atop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four rows of seven equals 28. This would be four times seven equals 28. Let's go to problem B. Let me count the rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven rows and across the bottom is one, two, three, four. So this one is modeling seven times four. This one models four times seven, this one modeled seven times four. It's almost like A was just turned to become B. So what do we know about these facts? We know that these facts are called turnaround facts. Four times seven is the same as seven times four. Review number three. How many small squares are in this array? Well, we have one, two, three, four rows and there's four squares across. Four times four equals, is it 18, 12, 16, or 20? Well, let me skip count by fours. Four plus four is eight, plus another four is 12, plus another four is 16. So my correct answer would be 16 square units. Review problem number four says, I should be able to draw lines to match each multiplication product equation with its product. So let's start at the top. My first problem is three times five equals question mark. Well, I know if it's times five that I could count by fives three times. This would be five, 10, 15. So I would draw a line from the top down to the 15. The second problem is five times five. That's five groups of five. So I'm just gonna skip count by fives five times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So therefore, this five times five, I would draw a line going from five times five down to the number 25. The next problem is two times nine. I can skip count by two nine times to solve this problem. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I've solved that two times nine equals 18. So I would draw a line from two times nine to the 18. And finally, six times zero. Well, I have six groups with nothing in them. That would be like if I had six bucket of apples, but no apples in the bucket. How many apples do I have? Well, I have zero, any number times zero equals a product of zero. So I would draw a line from the bottom to the top zero. Now, there are several games that we learned in this unit. We learned how to play array games. Game number one was count and compare. This is a game you could play at home. You would simply deal out your array cards so that all the players have the same amount in a stack. You might play this game with your family at home. Players place the card dimensions side up in the stack in front of them, and each player takes a top card from the stack and lays it down in the middle. 
Players then discuss and decide who has the largest array. You can figure this out by skip counting. If you know the multiplication fact that it represents, you could place the arrays next to each other, or you could use another strategy to solve that. The player with the largest array gets all the array cards and puts them in the bottom of their pile. At the end of the game, the person with the most cards is the winner. Another game that we learned was a game called Factor Pairs. You would, again, use your array cards and you would spread them out and dimensions would be listed side up. You would point to the card and say the total of number of squares on it if you know it. If you don't know it, you would use a strategy to figure it out, maybe skip counting. Try not to count the squares one by one. Say the multiplication equation represented by the array. For example, this card represents 2 times 5, two groups of 5, equals 10. Turn the array card over to check. If you knew the fact, put it in a pile of facts you know. If you didn't know the fact, put it back in the pile to practice again. The third game we played with our array cards was making multiplication cards. And for this one, you wouldn't necessarily use your array cards, but you could to help you. You're going to make multiplication cards that we started in the previous lesson. You want to have multiplication cards so that you can practice your facts at home. At the end of this lesson, we're going to take a quiz. This is what the quiz looks like. Please see your teacher for the quiz if you haven't taken this quiz yet. And finally, if you are absent, you want to go do the independent practice page that goes with this problem. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning about our review lesson for uh, 3.7 and reviewing to get ready for your quiz.